the Dominican is fun. They have so much more fun in their worship. They're very hospitable. They don't turn a person away. If you walk up to someone's home, they'll invite you in. Yes, it's beautiful, but it's more than beaches. It's just this loving, very alive culture. I love that we get to do hands-on ministry with Dominicans, but there's the development piece of working with future leaders who will follow behind us. Our interns come in and are just learning about the culture and just spending time in the community. It really doesn't matter what they're doing, just using whatever the need is to love on people. My goal is that when people go home with these pictures of people from the community, it's not just a picture of 20 kids plastered around theirs, but that they know the names of the kids in the picture and they've heard their story. Parents, youth leaders, youth sponsors, pastors, would you prioritize Life Conference, please? I'm here in Orlando, Florida, where this place is going to be full of thousands of teenagers, and we want your teens to be part of it as well. I'm one of those teens that benefited so much from this event. When I was a sophomore in high school, God met me at Life Conference, and I long for that experience for your teens as well. I know it's not easy. I know it comes at a price, but it's worth it. Join us, Orlando, Florida, 2019 Life. I, I want to take it easy. Work's been hard this year. I want to go to the beach. What's the problem? Yeah, but we went to the beach last year because yeah. of the same reason. Yeah, and we got to relax. We got to take it easy. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> That's not what I meant. And you know that. Yes, the beach was fun. We all had a great time, but my father is not going to be around forever. And I don't want to feel like I missed this opportunity to spend time with him. I don't know why we always have to go through this. I wish you could just... How many of us have a kitchen that looks a bit like that, at least some of the time? A simple discussion about where we're going on vacation is suddenly this full-blown argument between two people who love each other. Conflict shows up everywhere in our lives. Maybe it's not the big blow-up, but just those everyday difficult situations uh, in our kitchens, you know, uh, with our kids, in our dorm rooms, in our neighborhoods, and at the places we work. Remember, you said you were going to send me that worksheet so I'd only have to enter them once. We talked about that. That was the whole point of the worksheet, only having to do it once. That's fine for you, but now I'm going to look stupid because we're the only group that doesn't have its numbers done because you didn't do them. Oh, hey, wait a minute. That's not fair. This isn't my fault. You didn't send me... The problem with conflict is we can't pretend it doesn't affect us. It wears us down, builds up walls and tears down relationships. Maybe you haven't spoken to your sister for five years. And how often do you find yourself just in the same conflict again and again, maybe with your spouse, just like that wife who said, why do we have to keep going through this? Wouldn't it be great if there were some real answers, the answers we're all looking for? Well, I've got some good news for you. The Bible has a lot to say about relationships and conflict and where conflict comes from, but best of all, how we can work through conflict in a completely different way. Resolving Everyday Conflict is an eight-week group study that unpacks many of these wonderful truths. How many of you here have kids? Any of you said to your kids, can't you just get along? Yep, how did that work? 
Not so well is my guess. You maybe got five minutes out of it if you were lucky. Jesus addresses conflict and he says, there's a place you start in conflict and it's not with the other guy. You start with yourself. What is your contribution? When we deny a conflict exists, when we just avoid it, when we pretend it's not there, it's like a ticking bomb. It's just waiting uh, to go off. Unforgiveness is the poison we drink, hoping someone else will die. But the question we need to ask is, where's God in all this? What does God think about this conflict? Maybe the question isn't, how do I win? Maybe the question is, what would please and honor God in this situation? So we would like to invite you to come along and join the study. It's a lot of fun, maybe bring a friend. It's not churchy or churchy language. It's just practical answers to this everyday problem. It's what God has to say about conflict. You know, a lot of people remodel their, how their kitchen looks, uh, and that's fine. But you would be amazed at what can happen when God remodels what's going on inside your kitchen. All right, good morning. It is so awesome to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Faith Alliance Church. My name is Harry Ozarek. I'm the assistant pastor here, and I have a few announcements. If you would um, take out your bulletins for me, and uh, there's more in there than what I'm going to share um, right now, so please uh, take, a, take a look at everything that we have going on in there. Um, as you just saw on the screen, we have a life group um, being offered called Resolving Everyday Conflict, going through that exact same material. It um, is starting February 20th on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m., all right, so I've got some clipboards in the hand to Pastor Paul. If you're interested at all, again, putting your name on this clipboard does not say that you have to come. But if you are interested in coming, um, please do do so, so we, uh, we would have an idea of some numbers that maybe would come. Going to be a good, good time. Please come. It, it's, um, what would you say, Pastor Paul? Life transforming almost, wouldn't you say? We do have hearing assistance um, available. Uh, Cliff Bergstead, we're asking him to be our um, beta tester, if you will. And so if you'd like to know if it works or doesn't work, you can just, no, I'm just kidding. Come talk to me if you need anything, um, or you can go back to the sound booth. If you are looking for some extra volume to your service, um, please come back to the sound booth, and we would love to help you out with that. If you look in your bulletin, we have a category in there every week called Blessing Our Community. Again, this is an idea for us as a church family to together lift up a portion of our community in prayer. This week, as a church, we want to lift up the Sunrise Women's Clinic. Please pray for the Lord's leading for the staff and volunteers of the clinic and that the clinic would be reaching women and families with the love of God. Our Wednesday night meal sign-up is on the bulletin board in the back. I want to thank you all to those that do give to that, um, whether it's monetary or food-related. Um, a lot of awesome times and relationship-building times are, ha um, are happening at that um, event. Wednesday night meal is happening at 6.30 every Wednesday night in between our roots and adult life groups and our common ground and adult life group times. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I invite you to come at 6.30 this Wednesday and come check out what God is doing here um, through our Wednesday night ministry at Faith Alliance Church. Our annual meeting is today following the service, so we'll have a short break after the service, and then uh, please stick around. Our annual reports are on the back on the table um, by the entry doors. And my last announcement is after the annual meeting, if we could have some of you stay um, and help stack chairs, leaving the front three rows, that would be very helpful. And with all of that, I'm going to invite Pastor Paul to come on up. Last week, we uh, made some announcements regarding our, our Super Bible Bowl. What I want you to know is that uh, we thank each and every one who participated. Uh, it's, the goal, obviously, is to read the Bible on a consistent basis. Many of you have done that. This year is the first year we're going to give out some special awards, and as your name is called, I'm going to ask if you'd come up here and receive a trophy. Okay, so 
Rookies of the year, these are obviously first-time players, rookies, who had a great showing this past year in the Super Bible Bowl. And in case you don't know what this was, for a month, we were reading through different passages in the, in the Bible, looking at different characters in the Bible. You'd get points every week for reading the selected passages, for summarizing the passages, for taking sermon notes, and then memorizing a select uh, passage of Scripture. So if you did all that, obviously you got more points for your team. The rookies of the year then are John, Casey, and Jacqueline Barnhart. I know you're here because I was talking to you earlier. You all got to come on up. Oh, he's representing the family. Kate Hatter, Stacy Abar, and Doug Poos, you are all Rookies of the Year, so please come and get your trophy, and let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Cherish this trophy, Doug. We went all out for you. <laughs> we have several comeback players of the year. These are players who have improved their game uh, from their previous year, and again, this is our fourth year of doing this, so comeback players of the year, we have Sean Dodds, Kevin Topp, David Moore, Melody Keller, Brielle Larson, Rod Wall, Joan Schrader, and Terry Moore. So, if any of those are here, Sean is, Brielle, and Melody, and Joan, good. You don't want to forget Braille. Braille wants to hold her trophy. She wants to hold it. We have several players selected to the Pro Bowl, and these are players who, who turned in their scorecard each week and got the full 30 points each week. The following players then selected to the Pro Bowl are Dwight Thiessen, Diana Thiessen, Tesha Ozarek, Ben Larson, Heather Wall, Gail Staffenson, and Diana O'Connor. Please come up and get your trophy. Pro Bowl selection, what an honor. <laughs> oh, Gail, there's more. No. <laughs> Gail, hey, wait, wait, Gail, we should have a speech from you. Display it with honor. Our speech and drama coach. Come on, speech. And we do have one last. It's going to be an award. I don't know if I'd be honored to receive this award, but it is the most reviewed players award. These are players whose scorecards, the totals had to be changed two or more times. When your scorecards are turned in, our um, illustrious secretary takes a look at the cards to make sure that everything is legit. Yeah, the, the, the Super Bible Bowl Commissioner. The Commissioner, yes. <laughs> you know her as your secretary, but she is also the Super Bible Bowl Commissioner. There were two individuals that had to have their scorecards um, recalculated multiple times, and those are Parker Waltner and Katrinka Cox. Parker, no? Oh, I wonder why. But we all know who it is, right? So you make sure and c congratulate them. Give him a hug. He might need it. Anyway, again, thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, don't stop reading the Bible on our website. We have a link that can get you to a daily Bible reading plan. We encourage you to take that Bible reading plan or another one. We want you reading, studying, interacting with the Bible. And this is a fun and a good way to get many of us uh, more consistent in reading the Bible. So, thank you. Oh, yes, and we have to oh, have no, the final all, score. Hey, 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 it's all right. He forgot. I it's did. All right. The final score. Let's have <clears> it. <throat> put it up on the screen. Christian, so if you would. Pump his head up a little more. Go ahead and show theirs first, if you would. Valiant, valiant effort. Um, excuse me, I need space. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> 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 AFC, well done. NFC, well done. It was a great battle this year. AFC, I think we thought we were going to run away with it. We got a little cocky at the end, and uh, NFC really pushed, made a big push there at the end. But again, for the third year straight, AFC, we reign victorious. 
Give yourself a hand. Well done. Well done. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> Next year will be pleasure. different. Next year will be different. <laughs> We're just going to leave that up there for everyone to see. I'm just kidding. Thank you again for all those that participated. And if you hadn't participated or haven't yet, that's okay, because next year, guess what's coming around? Super Bible Bowl. Um, so, yeah, what a great time. And like Pastor Paul said, please please know this is uh, an effort to help build a habit, to be in God's Word consistently, that He would fill our lives on a daily basis. And with that, if we could have our uh, ushers come forward, and we're going to take our offering. So if you'd bow your heads with me. And let's take some time before the Lord as we lead into worship. Lord, we thank you um, for the fun that we can have as a family. Lord, I thank you that we can have joy as we strive to follow you. And Lord, that you fill us with a passion to love those around us. Lord, I pray that as we take this offering, as we take this time to give back to you, that we would do it with that same joy. Lord, that we would do that with that same passion, knowing that we are already giving back what is yours. Lord, I do pray as well that we would take the time this week to pray for the Sunrise Women's Clinic, that we would shower them with blessings as they are seeking to help women through a tough time. And Lord, as a family, as we continue to move through this this service and this day and this week, I pray that it would be honoring to you. Lord, that we would lay down our worries and frustrations, our anxieties, our fears, the to-do list, Lord, and take this time and truly offer it to you. Lord, that this offering wouldn't just be money, but it'd be our time and our thoughts. Lord, that you would captivate us right now. And Lord, that we'd be able to worship and hear from you in a unique way. Lord, we thank you for how you love us, how you care for us, how you provide over and over and over again. Lord, I pray that we continue to follow you with full faith. and a heart to serve and love you and the ones around us. It's in your name. Amen. Christ is. 
We did forget one major announcement during the uh, Super Bible Bowl Awards. Every participant on, it should have been the other football team, so, uh, whatever, AFC, the championship team, everybody gets a Super Bowl ring. So on your way out today, the ushers will be in the back. Make sure and you pick up a uh, Super Bowl ring. I wasn't a winner. Who's a winner out here? Not a receiver, but gets that ring. For those of you that are um, visiting us this morning, not a regular part, I should say, of Faith Alliance Church, I just want you to know that this morning is not going to be a typical sermon in that sense, but rather it's a brief uh, recap of the history of this church, as well as a brief... um, look into the future of where, of where we see the Lord is taking us. And as we begin, I'm going to ask that you bow with me in prayer. Father God, we are grateful to be here today. We know that if it wasn't for the sacrifices of many throughout the years, we wouldn't be here this morning. So we do want to honor the past. We also want to embrace the future. Lord, we have our plans, we have our ideas. We trust that they are that we are being led by you, that we'd step out in obedience to you. I'm asking today, God, for your, as we just sang, for your Holy Spirit's presence to be here. Guide us, I pray, that it results in glory for you and for the growth of your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know how many of you know this, but this church has been in existence for over 70 years. Who, oh, I'm okay. Who out here is 70 years old or older? Just raise your hand. Nobody's going to admit it. Two, three, four. Four people over 70. So what does that tell you? This church, <laughs> no, not that you're old. Many of us weren't even born when this church was founded. So, obviously, throughout the years, many have made sacrifices. People made sacrifices to purchase this land. People made sacrifices to construct this church building. People throughout the years made sacrifices so that you could, we could pur- purchase furniture and furnaces. Throughout the years, many people have sacrificed to pay utilities and, by my count, to pay 13 different pastors. 
Throughout the years, many people have also volunteered, and they volunteered countless hours. It would be amazing to see how many hours it would add up to between all the different people teaching, the different ages of Sunday school classes, the Awana ministry that was here for roughly 25 years. Was that right, Lynn? Roughly 25 years of Awana. Who knows how many hours have been spent in the nursery taking care of babies and infants. All the hours that have gone into volunteering to set up the sound and the video equipment each week, leading worship, serving meals, providing leadership by serving on the governing board or an elder or a deaconess or a trustee, and we could go on and on. There have been many, many, many sacrifices throughout the years, and this morning, we want to honor the past. We want to say thank you. We're standing on the shoulders of the people that have gone before us. And had it not been for their sacrifices and their willingness to step into different leadership positions throughout the years, who knows where this church would be? Who knows where we would be if Faith Alliance Church wasn't here? While we honor the past, we want to embrace the future. We stand on the shoulders in part of those who have made it possible for Faith Alliance Church to be here. And we also know that it's time for us to step out. It's time for us to step out in faith in honor of those who have gone before us. They had to step out in faith at one point in time to even purchase land. They had to step out in faith to say, hey, let's build this church building. They had to step out in faith and obedience to God. And this morning, what I'm presenting to you is, let's honor that. But let us also embrace the future and let us honor them by taking steps of faith in obedience to what the Lord is laying on our heart. And what I'm going to share with you this morning are three areas that we, the leadership of this church, and actually you, the congregation, have affirmed uh, multiple times. The last one was a year and a half ago. The direction that God is leading us, where we need to expand our ministries, our staff, in our facilities. And we need to do that not only to minister and care for our current church family, but we also need to do it because of the needs that are represented in our community that I'm telling you, if every church in Sydney did its job, we would still have many, many, many more people that need to not only come to church, but to be able to come to Christ and be saved and be discipled. So, let me begin by talking about our need to expand our ministries. Last spring, we did a little trial basis. Uh, We start on Easter Sunday. We're going to go to two services. The reason we did that, at least a large part, was so that we could offer another opportunity for people to connect with God and to be able to connect with one another. Interestingly, uh, just putting the numbers together for the annual report, when we had one worship service, we averaged 103 in attendance. Since going to two services, we are averaging 133 a Sunday between the two services. I think you all know I'm not really good at math. I believe this is about a 29-30% increase in attendance since offering the two services. The neat thing about this is it is virtually cost-free. We didn't have to buy any more land. We didn't have to expand our building. We didn't have to do... It was right here. So I'm saying it's good use of our time, our, our facility, our leadership. And judging by the results that we're seeing, it was a good decision. A trial last uh, spring, we went back to it again this fall. And um, again, consistently seeing 133 or more uh, between the two services. I think you also need to know that that's our on-site ministry. We're also having quite an impact online. How many of you, again, show of hands, throughout the past year or so, how many of you have ever watched a service on our Facebook live stream? Okay, check that out. And I know there's people doing it right now. Dave Moore, hi Dave. Dave's sitting in the hospital mending. But... You need to know there are several hundred people every week that are watching our services online. Where they're all at, I don't necessarily know, but the point is, 
again, something for a minimal investment. We're able to expand our footprint. We're able to uh, share the gospel with more people. So, yes, we're having a uh, ministry on site, but we're also having a uh, ministry online, plus the hundreds of people that check out our website on a monthly basis is something that we don't necessarily see, but it is our ministry is being felt more than just on site. I will tell you, too, that there are plans uh, in the making to improve the quality of our online ministry as well as additional ways to use social media to reach even more people with the gospel. A year and a half ago, we also made a decision on Wednesday night to focus, I should say, the ministry to our children on Wednesday night as opposed to Sunday morning. Prior to making this switch, we averaged 15 elementary age kids per Sunday school or what we are now calling Sunday morning roots. I will make mention that every one of these kids that came Sunday morning had parents that were coming to this church. Since we've made the switch going to Wednesday, we have seen a dramatic increase in the attendance, not only of kids, but also youth. In fact, what do they say, a picture's worth a thousand words? Take a look at this little video here to see what takes place here on Wednesday night, not only with the kids, but also the adults. Go ahead. is a taste of what takes place here on Wednesday nights. Um, since switching to Wednesday night for the focus of our children's ministry, we're seeing an average of 25 kids per night. And I might add that many of these kids are coming from unchurched families. And we're calling this our Roots Ministry because we're helping kids establish relational roots with Jesus Christ and with this church family. Switching to Wednesday night has also enabled us to utilize our high school youth to lead in various parts of the Roots ministry. I don't know if you saw it on there, but the youth are leading the games. Youth are helping lead the worship. Youth are actually leading the small group times, the life groups for these younger kids. So it's a great opportunity for our youth to get experience in leading, which Again, prior to this on uh, Sunday mornings, that was not happening. The common ground is our youth ministry. They meet on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. They are averaging um, 35 students a week, and roughly one-third of these students are coming from unchurched families. So I, w I want you to see the impact that we're having here on uh, throughout the week on those who are uh, coming from unchurched backgrounds. It's a unique ministry, a unique opportunity that we have. We also offer adult, uh, several adult life groups that meet on Wednesday night. 
We have an average attendance of uh, 16 between the three different uh, life groups. Four will be happening now. Did I mention that we offer a meal Wednesday night? Yeah, we've been averaging 70 meals a week. And you saw uh, some of the video there of the just the wide span of uh, ages represented with those meals. So a big thank you to all those who are bringing the food, who are preparing the food, who are serving the food, cleaning up afterwards. I think you get the idea that there's a lot happening. And a lot of it depends on many people uh, volunteering and sacrificing to make this possible. We also offer adult life groups that meet throughout the week, and there's an average attendance there uh, between the groups of 36. So while we are pleased with what is taking place in our ministries, we are not satisfied. We are convinced that we can connect more people to God and more people to one another but by providing quality biblical teaching for all ages. And this leads to the next area of our ministry that we'd like to expand on, and that is our staff. Three and a half years ago when we hired Harry to be our youth and worship pastor, we had roughly six, eight uh, high school youth attending our church. Today we have over 25 that not only attend but are actively involved in ministry. With all the children that we currently have attending our Roots ministry, there is a need to pr provide more oversight and more leadership than either Pastor Harry or myself can provide. We are actually in the process right now of putting together a ministry description for a director of ministry to young children. If what takes place since we hired Pastor Harry ministering to the youth is any indication of what can happen when we have a person who is dedicated, competent, and committed to a specific ministry, we can only imagine what will happen what can take place when we hire a director of ministry to young families. What I want you to also understand is that this additional staff is not just for our church family. It is for that. But I don't think I have to tell you that we are living in a community, our whole society for that matter, and where families are being ripped apart by any number of issues. We have a duty and we have a responsibility as a body of Christ to minister to young people and to families. And unless and until we can have somebody directing this, putting in time and energy into it, we're going to be keep doing what we've been doing. And I, for one, am saying that is not enough. There's such a need right in our own backyard. We can do better. So to start with, we are looking at this to be a um, part-time position. Lord willing, in time, it grows. We grow as a body. We'll be able to make this director of ministry to young families a full-time position. This leads to the third area where we see the need to expand. Ministry, staff, and now facility. The reality is that our current facility is limiting our capacity to minister effectively. I want to give you just a couple of examples of what takes place here on a week-to-week -week basis. Sunday morning, the women have a life group that meets in the back of the sanctuary. This is because, any guesses? There's no, no other space for them to meet. What happens after a service is what we are encouraging and what we are all about is helping people connect to each other. Virtually every Sunday, people are being ushered out of this sanctuary between the services that are having conversations that we're encouraging them to have because we need to make room and space available for the women to have their life group in the back. I don't know if you've noticed it on Sunday mornings when you come into the entryway, it gets a little congested between the youth selling their coffee, between the greeters handing out the bulletins, between people having a conversation. 
we have a bottleneck that takes place every week at a time and a place when we are trying to foster and develop relationships. We, we can do better with a better and a bigger facility. Also on Sunday morning, we have another life group that meets across the street at Chad's Furniture. Any guesses why they're meeting across the street? We're out of room. We tried having two groups in the sanctuary, a men's group and a women's group. Women won, they're in here. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you couldn't hear for each other. We are trying to foster life-transforming relationships. We want people connecting to God and to each other. And when you can't hear each other in a conversation, even when you're seated right next to them, it's defeating the purpose. Our current facility is limiting our ability to minister effectively. We can do better. I want to show you a brief video of what we had presented to you, I believe, a year and a half ago of adding on an addition to this facility. And it would be right out here on the west side of the church. We would actually take off the current entryway. You can go ahead and roll it. This addition would include, and it may not be exactly to this scale, this design, but what we want to offer is more room in an entryway where we can actually have conversations, where we can have the room and the space available for that. We want to offer a place uh, for a coffee bar, a coffee place that's not congesting traffic. We also want to be able to offer uh, more offices. I know uh, Pastor Harry is getting a new office uh, as we speak. I don't know if you've ever been in Braille's office. There's room for about two of you. Uh, bigger, off, uh, bigger entryway, three offices, and a meeting room. The two of the three offices would be uh, dual purpose that we would be able to meet, have uh, life groups meet in there. And obviously the uh, meeting room can be used for life groups as well. So we'd gain at least three possibly four uh, more meeting spaces. We're also talking, if you see the hallway, that's on the back side there, we may, again, this is all in the works, we're looking at possibly putting uh, the nursery on the main floor as you come in, as opposed to downstairs. So, again, this plan that you're seeing is not, uh, I'm going to say, the plan. It is a plan. It is a direction that we are going. Um, got it all? Currently, we have uh, 175. I know that says 174. I just got the financial statements uh, from Chris this week. We currently have $175,000 in the building fund. When we raise $300,000 of a proposed $600,000 uh, addition, when we have $300,000 in hand, we're going to build. We see the need. We are confident that that... Taking out a loan, um, i got to back up a second. A, a year and a half ago, we already had approval from our district superintendent. We had approval from the district executive committee, committee, and we had approval from the Alliance Development Fund. The Alliance Development Fund took a look at our financial status, and they had already agreed, based on what we showed them, to give us a loan in the amount of $600,000. What's not on the screen, and I didn't know this till this morning, is um, your leaders, your elders, and your governing board members have already committed in the next three years to give $37,000 to the building fund and that this would be above and beyond their regular giving. What we are asking you to do is to do the same in the next three years, to make a pledge, a promise, obviously based on faith, based on God's grace, to give specifically to the building fund, that we could get this addition, we could get it done, and we could get it paid for in a short amount of time. We do realize as leadership that there are some who do not want to see us and go into any debt to build, and we respect that. We also know that with three of the $600,000 in hand before we build, 
we will not be going into debt that is unmanageable nor is it unpayable in the near future. We have been talking about building for at least six years, if not longer, and if you look out there, you can see what we got done. It is time that we take a step of faith. It is time we step out in faith and doing our part while we invite God to step in and to do his part. And in case you are wondering what I just shared with you, the ministry staff and the facilities, this has already been approved by this congregation back in September of 2016 when we presented the master plan to you. That gave our the goals, the plans, the dreams that we felt God was leading us to do, what I'm presenting to you this morning is saying, now is the time that we take steps to fulfill what God is leading us to do. I want you to know that you are invited and you are welcome to stay for our annual meeting, which will be a few minutes after we conclude here. But I would say more importantly, I want you to know that you're invited and you are welcome to be a part of a church family that is seeking to live the great commandment. The great commandment that we would love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we would love our neighbors as much as ourselves. We'd also be a part, you're invited and welcome to be a part of a church that is fulfilling the great commission. The great commission is to go out and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that Jesus taught us. Folks, this, what we have, is good. We are thankful for the sacrifice of the many that have gone before us. We look out in our community and out in our world, and there is a need that we cannot be content with where we're at. We take a step of faith. We invite God to step in. And let him do what only he can do as we make ourselves available and obedient to him. So I'm inviting you and welcoming you to be a part of this church family. Membership or not, that's aside. We want you, we want more people to come in and be connected. Connected to God, connected to one another, and connected to the world in life-transforming relationships. Let us pray. Father God, it is nothing short of amazing that we are here this morning. We do stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. Many have sacrificed much throughout the years that enables and allows us to be here today, to be in a heated building, to be on soft chairs, to have furnace that works, to have staff that's paid. It's just, God, you've provided, and we are grateful. Lord, we sense you are calling us to step out in faith, step out in obedience to you, and see even more people being connected to you, even more people connected to each other. And beyond that, we could connect in this community and beyond people who need Jesus Christ. God, I pray that you would guide us, you would show us, you would provide as we step out that you would enable us to do what we cannot do on our own. Not just we have a bigger church. Father God, so your kingdom will grow in us, so your kingdom will go th grow through us, that there will be less people in hell and more people in heaven because of our obedience to you. We ask and pray this all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you'll please stand up and receive the benediction. Again, in a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, we'll have our annual meeting, and that will be right here in the sanctuary. I pray as we go out this week that we will have eyes to see, that we'll have ears to hear, that we'll have feet that will take us to where God wants us to be, that we'll say and do what he wants us to say and do for his honor and for his glory. Amen. Thank you. Remember to get your Super Bowl rings on the way out, winners.
test 